Let me see who will be the first to join us tonight. Come on in. Mr. Marvian, how are you, my friend? Everything iry? <laughs> Blessings, 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 blessings. Good to have you. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. What a mighty God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thankful. Come on in and say how they do. Incredible. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you, their friend, Nurse Marjorie is in the building, everybody. And all those who are watching on your televisions and you can't say anything. Blessings, anyway. Bounce with me. He's a mighty God. But a G. G as in Jesus. <laughs> oh, my friend, Brother Gamar. Where's the lovely wife, Brother G? My contender. Evangelist Henry. Yeah. Sister Paulette. Elder Hay. Bless you, sir. Took up my phone to text you today and just got distracted. Mr. Dean and Nell, blessings. I'm bouncing. Well, you know, I know, we know, the whole world knows he's a mighty God. Ain't nobody like him. Jesus is the Lord. And somebody says if he's not God of all, he's not God at all. Amen. There is only one God and his name is Jesus. And we give God glory tonight. Amen. We thank you for joining us. 
My name is Carlton Christie, amen. I am the pastor here serving as a pastor, I should say, at Chosen Generation Ministries here in York Region, Ontario. And we're thankful that the Lord has given us a chance to share with you on tonight. To all those who have already uh, joined in and uh, said your hellos, Evangelist Simpson just came on, Brother Rupert, amen, is also here. Amen, Sister Nell, we've got Elder Hay, uh, Nurse Marjorie, and first and foremost was our dear Sister Marvia Brown from New York, New York, USA. Give God thanks for you all. Brother G's also in the building, my good friend. Amen, Brother Mar Simpson in the studio tonight. Amen, as usual, my sidekick. Amen, Sister Kayla. Amen, we give God thanks for her. She helps me with the scripture. She's my little scribe. Amen. I'm no Pharisee, but she <laughs> Amen. Helps me with the scripture and uh, so on and so forth. Well, we give God thanks today. It's a beautiful day today. I noticed that the, 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 the outfits here in Ontario is changing. People are not wearing their winter coats like they used to a few weeks ago. Amen. And everybody's just welcoming the sun and the warm weather. And so we give God thanks for, for change of weather. I'm grateful that I'm in a country where I can experience the seasons. And uh, in the, in, 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 even in that, there is a lesson. So some of you perhaps are going through seasons right now. But seasons change. Praise God. And so will your wardrobe and your outlook and the plants around you and how things seem. Weeping may endure for a night, even though night is not a season. Well, it could be. You know, there's a song that says... God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. So you may be going through a dark period in life. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 9 and verse number 2, I believe, says, The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Verse number 6 says, For unto us a child is born. Amen. What does a child have to do with the light? Well, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Amen. We could preach on that tonight, but it's not preaching time, brother G, brother G, El Hey, it's it's the word. We're gonna go to the word tonight. So we're gonna pray. Thankful for those of you who are on Facebook. Amen. I could see y'all. Praise the Lord, Sister Donna. Amen. Good to see you, my dear. Amen. Those of you on Facebook, for those we got people who are not on Facebook, and so they rely on the on our YouTube channel, which is accessible by everybody god bless you sister elaine how is the gentleman hopefully he reads safely uh so there are people who do not have a facebook account and if you're not on facebook you can't see facebook stuff so uh we post this um teaching after after every service we have a youtube channel called chosen generation media amen i would encourage you and welcome that you uh go and subscribe to chosen generation media you will see our logo on there. Praise God. Please subscribe and help us to spread the word. Amen. We don't do foolishness on this channel. I have, a, I have my own personal channel where I can be myself. But church is church. And to God be the glory. And um, uh, so please go and support it and share it so that others can join in. Because they get good stuff on this channel. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Dr. Johnson is here. Praise the Lord. Blessings to you. Amen. Hopefully you did you please tell Sister uh Donna that I am very grateful for that little gift. Evangelist Lewis, I was in your town yesterday. Sorry, Sunday. I was in your city on Sunday. Amen. Got up to the mountain. I didn't know that place was so beautiful. Praise God, because when you look up to the mountains, you don't see the homes because they're on the other side of the street. There's no walkway at the edge of the mountain. But my goodness. Amen. I was up on the mountain with Jesus. I was down in the valley so low. I was out there where no one could help me. <laughs> Please let me walk with you, Jesus. Got to watch yourself and I'm old school. These songs are right here. As soon as you say a word, I got a song right, right, right there. <laughs> Sister Amanda, God bless you. Minister Hey, God bless you. Thank you for stepping in on Sunday. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. 
Amen. All right. All right, Sister Nell, what uh, teaching? Oh, very humbled by that, my dear. God bless you. To God be the glory. I can only give what I receive. Paul says, I delivered unto you that which I also received. And so if I'm giving you what I receive, it's not mine. I'm just passing it along. So to God be the glory. God be the glory. We're sorry we miss it too. But they took care of me, Evangelist Lewis. <laughs> Dr. Goldburn. Oh, my God. I was wondering what happened. I haven't seen you in weeks. Amen. Welcome back. We're going to pray. We're going to go into the word. Last week, we started a topic called faith. And we want to, amen, pick up where we left off. And, uh, amen, hopefully share more from what the Lord has given to us. Amen. Praise God. We're going to be praying at this time. I want to pray for you. Amen. We love you and we love you and whatever concerns you. We want to put it before the Lord. And, uh, Amen. Make this time, make this time a time of Amen. Communion with us in the Word. I know we're busy with you know we're multitask, but if you can, turn that, put that phone on mute, praise God, and uh, let it be established going forward that this is your time, just an hour on a Tuesday evening to spend time with us in the Word. Praise God. We're gonna pray. Amen. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful tonight. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for this time of, of worship and fellowship and the word of God. Father, we pray as we gather around, sit at your feet tonight, that you will pour into us. Oh God, if, if ever a time we need you, surely we need you now. Hallelujah. Lord God, we hear around the world that there is a shortage of food and farmlands and, 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 and prices are going up because... There is strong demand and, and, and a lesser supply. But thankful there is there is supply in your word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We can hear it. We can sing it. We can, we, you know, we have choices. We can, there's so many churches around, so many preachers, so many doctrines and the like. But we thank you tonight for, for, for being here with us. And as we gather, we pray for those who have gathered with us, wherever they are. Hallelujah. There are some in this country. There are some in other countries. There are some at work. There are some on the way from work. Praise God. And I pray that even as we spend these few moments together, that you will speak to our hearts. Uh, we don't all have, need the same thing. Our needs are varied. Our challenges are different. God, where we are of a surplus, there are other people who have a deficit. Over to God. Help us tonight as we share together that the books will be balanced. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are in need of a healing this evening. Praise God. And those who the enemy has afflicted their bodies or perhaps out of bad habits we have created an issue on our own. But we ask you for mercy tonight. God, somebody needs help with diabetes and blindness or, or any kind of uh, issues with their bones. Even somebody who's been diagnosed with a terrible disease. You are the bomb in Gilead. Oh, God, you are the one. You're the great physician. Please, send your word tonight and heal them. Let faith come alive in them to receive that which you have already supplied. As we give you the praise and the glory. Father, we thank you for doors you have opened. Somebody's getting a raise. Somebody need a house. Somebody need a place of worship. Oh, we to God. Hallelujah. You promised to restore that which the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm had eaten. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We declare and amen agree that this is a new season and a new day. We bless and praise you and honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, glory. Don't get me started now. I feel something there. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Amen. All right, let's get started. We are going to go into the word of the Lord. And if you came in after I've greeted everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Vinette. God bless you and your family and your sisters. These are people who support us, praise God, in every which way. Praise God. We thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about faith. We were talking last week. We called some names. Praise God. We called some names. And I hope you, let me do this thing again. I hope you have your Bible, you know, your home, so you don't have to be on the phone. You know, where is your Bible? Amen. Find your Bible. Find the book. Amen. Jesus went into the temple in St. Luke 4, and they gave him the book for to read, and he found a place where it was written. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So you need to know where certain things are. Amen. They can't depend on electronics. 
Sorry for those preachers who are preaching and their device die. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know where Matthew is. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I just feel feel happy tonight. Praise God. Some people don't can't come without the calculator. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> Amen. They don't know. We used to have timetables. Now I'm gonna give away my age now. I think I don't want to talk too much about those things. Some people think, Amen, I'm I'm a young fall, but I'm telling you, we used to have these exercise books. Come on, somebody. Who's out there know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Two times your timetables on the back. You gotta learn to count and so on. All right, let's get into this thing here. Amen. Talking about faith. Amen. Tell faith that I'm talking about her. So last week we talked about Abraham and Sarah, and different different individuals, what kind of faith they had. I don't know where I left off, but I want to start. Amen. With jo Joseph. Amen. Joseph had what we call undying faith praise god amen joseph had what we call undying faith and there are some of you out there like joseph who was joseph joseph was this young man who was in a big family he had what 10 brothers and one sister praise god or 11 brothers and uh and one, one sister praise god her sister's name is dinah and joseph was born uh, he only had one close family brother, which was the same mother as him. His brother's name was Benjamin. But there was something special about Joseph. Joseph is a type of Christ. There, are, I didn't mention this before, but there are some individuals who um, who we call types of Christ. That means there was something about their lives that that reflected who Jesus was, even though they were not perfect. Praise God. So, for example, Adam, you know, Adam wasn't perfect because, you know, Adam, you know, eventually ate the fruit and all that. But as a type of Christ, Adam was the first son. Amen. It was the first son of God. Um, Adam was said to be raised from the dead. Jesus died literally and was raised. But Adam was born from the dust of the ground. Dust is dead stuff. When a man dies, he goes back to the dust. So, so for Adam to come from the dust is a type of being raised from the dead. Adam's wife came from his side. I'm giving the preacher, I'm giving some preachers some, some hints now. Adam's wife came from his side. And Jesus, amen, is the husband of the church. The church is the bride of Christ. And the church was born from his side. Out from his side, when he was on the cross, they pierced a spear in the side, and out came blood and water. Praise God. Water is for baptism, the blood is for amen, the remission of sin. Praise God. So what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You don't wash clothes in source of water. Praise God. You need detergent. And so the blood is the detergent that gets the sin away. Why did Adam sin? Well, Adam, amen, decided that he was going to obey his wife. So he died with his wife. Both of them sinned against God and they ate from the tree. They died with his wife. Jesus died for his wife. Sister Dorit, God bless you. I just gave... Uh, sister, amen, Dr. Johnson, message for you, but you're here yourself, so I want to say thank you, and Sister Vinet, and all those who, who, who stretch forth their hand to bless me in any way, and bless our family and our ministry, we give God thanks for you, but thank you, Sister Derek, I know you're not here, so, so that was commendable, that even though you're out of the country, you did make sure you're, you're represented in that way, I appreciate you, love you lots, amen, I pray you're safe, God is good. Amen. And your daughter pre preached the house down. <laughs> I won't even mention that. But anyway, you 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 saw it. All right. Uh, so 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 Adam Adam died. Amen. For his wife. Amen. With his wife, Jesus died for his wife. Praise God. Adam ate from a tree. Jesus died on a tree. <laughs> Adam left the garden on the sin. Amen. Jesus left the garden bearing sin. Praise the Lord. So, so there are some types and shadows. So Joseph, Joseph is a type of Christ. Joseph uh, was loved of his father, but hated of his brethren, his brothers. Praise God. They didn't think uh, much of Joseph because of the father's favor on him. Amen. Uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph, uh, what else? Uh, Joseph um, was, uh, was uh, um, married a Gentile bride. Amen. 
and so did Jesus. Jesus took on the Gentile bride as well. Praise God. So there are different different things out there that will uh, help us to understand uh, what a type and shadow is. Praise God. All right. So so that's a that's a that's an example there. So Joseph, as you know, uh, even though uh, he was under pressure, Joseph had a gift, and that gift uh, was the gift of dreams and interpretation. All right. So Joseph had the ability to 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 have uh, to 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 see things in his dream, and God God uses different methods to to show Himself and to speak to His people. Um, with Moses, He spoke face to face. God didn't have to. And when they say face to face, Moses didn't actually see God's face. Nobody, no man has seen God and live. What what happened there is that God covered His face. Praise God. But Moses, he was still in proximity with Moses, but Moses could not look straight into God's face. And we know that because when Moses came down from the mountain and uh, the people were trying to see him and he was face was glowing, um, you know, the, Moses said, oh, I got an idea. I saw this in the mountain. Remember, God told him to make sure you build whatever he saw. And so Moses was able to cover his face just like how he saw God cover his face. And Moses, in other words, Moses veiled his face. And the veil we know is a type of flesh so this is how jesus came into the world jesus came in uh, with a veil amen he was beyond the veil amen god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself and on the cross amen the veil of the temple was rent in twain which symbolizes amen that now we have access to god because the flesh barrier was broken all right anyway let's let's not get too deep on that um, so, so Joseph, Joseph had an ability to dream and God can speak to your face to face like he does to Moses, like he did to Moses. He can show you things in dreams. He can speak to you through the scriptures. God can speak to you through anything. Praise God. So we, we, you know, if don't be hooked on because God speaks to this person this way. Some of us are praying, Oh God, I need to hear your voice. Yes. But God can speak to you through scriptures. So God will choose a method. To, to speak to you and you will know because that's your way of hearing from God. When David wanted to hear from God, he go he went into worship. So worship is one way. While you're worshiping, in Acts chapter 13, verse number 2, while they were fasting and praying, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work we are to unto I have, I have called them. God bless you. Amen. Sister Bedford, praise God. Amen. So, so God can speak to you through fasting and prayer. Amen. God can speak to you while you're in the spirit. In, 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 the, in the book of Revelation, John said, while he was in the spirit, amen, on, on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's day, he heard behind him a voice. Amen. So, so, so God chooses different ways. Um, he can speak to you to your pastor. He can speak to you to a prophet. He can speak to you through dreams or a song. Um, you know, God has various ways to speak to you. He's not just hooked on, on what we are hooked on. So so Joseph's, um, Joseph's gift was challenged, though. Um, and uh, let me say this. If you are uh, gifted in a way that your gift and you're somewhere where your gift is not appreciated, praise God, amen, be careful that you don't let your gift die. Praise God. If you're gifted in a way and where you are is not where you are supposed to be because your gift is not being used, praise God. Be careful. Don't let your gift die. God will not, amen, uh, it, God will ignore the people who are pressuring you and, and hold you accountable for your gift. Some of you are, are gifted in the word, but you're not getting preaching opportunity. That don't mean you should leave your church. There are various ways. You have social media, you have street corner, you got places you can go. I was uh, I was talking to some saints on Sunday, and I said to them, we're not preaching no man. Brother Gamar, we're not preaching no man. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, we didn't even know what church pulpit was like, but street meetings, youth squad, you know, bus stop. I mean, different countries have their bylaws and restrictions, but but find a way, find a way, amen, to get the word out, especially now where, you know, you don't have to pay for broadcast privilege. Back in the day, to be on radio or television was 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 for the, those who had deep pockets. But now with social media, you can start a blog or a YouTube channel, get the word out. Amen. Tell somebody. 
there was this girl, this is what I preached about on Sunday. I was uh, invited to a, uh, to close with a service and uh, talk to them about this girl in Second Kings chapter 5. Young maid, nobody knows her name, but she was servant to Naaman's wife. Naaman was a leper. And while she was there doing her duties, don't know what she was doing, maybe she was washing clothes, you know, or ironing. You know, when you're doing those home chores, you talk to yourself. She said to herself, would to God, my Lord, with the prophet that is in Samaria, he would have recovered him of his leprosy. Amen. And somebody heard and told Naaman that there is hope. Amen. In, in Samaria. And he sent, got letters and all that. Just a little girl. I mean, let me get off that because I may have to preach somewhere else. But let me just say that you have a privilege to, to, to do something for the Lord. You don't need a pulpit and a, and a title. These signs shall follow them that believe. And, and I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but some of us who are pastors and bishops and all that, amen, we, we've paid our dues, and there's more to pay, but I'm just saying, we, we, we didn't just hurry, come up. <laughs> we've been around for a while. Come on, Brother Gamar, say something so they know I'm talking the truth. Praise God. They, we've, we've done our part. Praise God. Amen. I've gone to prison ministry and gone to places where you know demons attack you you could feel them i'm not talking about you think there is a spirit you could feel it praise god rubbing up against you resisting you praise god and still we we you know on the bus praise god in the marketplace you know stepping out of the way for a handcart man to pass and step back in the road and preach jesus praise god lay hands on people we, we've we've done our part Praise God. And there's still more to do. So we're not running down the pulpit. It's, it's sometimes because we slow down a little bit. And, and, and God has given us a place where we can we can preach. But for those of you who are coming up, you're at school. They got clubs. Praise God. You start a club. Baba, you'd be surprised who will come. Praise God. Amen. And, and whosoever will, praise the Lord, will come. So, so, so Joseph had a dream. Uh, he had dreams. He dreamt he saw his mother and father bowing down to him. He saw his brethren bowing down to him. And of course, they didn't receive it. Uh, I, I, can, I, I can understand why others will be jealous, but I had a feeling, Jacob, Jacob, you know better. Because Jacob was his daddy, and Jacob dreamed dreams too. He saw a ladder going up and down, and angels going up and down. So something rubbed off on, on Joseph. Praise God. And let me just pause to say, fathers and mothers, Things pass on to your children. It's not just shape of your nose and the complexion of your skin. Amen. Even if your child don't know you, there is a trait that goes along with your DNA. Amen. That your child can act like you and talk like you. Same mannerism, even if they don't know you. Praise God. So, so, so. Joseph had a dream. His brothers hated him. They, they, they faked his death and told his dad. And for years they thought, okay, Joseph was dead. Praise the Lord. But while they were going on with their life, this young man moved from hand to hand, was sold by the merchants to these people, and was sold eventually, became a house slave, praise God, and was there, uh, the, 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 the house master Potiphar, amen, had a wife, and she, she was, I mean, Potiphar was all the way, always at battle, at war, and here was this man working around the house, uh, maybe shirtless, working hard, and uh, she, you know, she, she wanted him to, and, but the man had integrity, he said, I can't do this man, I mean, everything in this house, amen, my master don't even know how much money he has, he doesn't know how much, amen, food left in the cupboard, he trusts me to maintain the inventory of this place, to run this place properly, I can't, I can't do this wickedness, wickedness, praise God, I can't do that, and so, uh, and so, um, he, uh, he, uh, you know, uh, she accused him of, of, I mean, there's no, they say hell has no fury like a woman score. <laughs> you know the story, he ended up in jail, but Joseph did not give up on his dreams. And while he was in jail, two people in jail had dreams. He interpreted their dreams. It happened just like he said, because God, it was a gift from God. And then Pharaoh heard of him. And in one day, Joseph moved from being a prison bum to the prime minister. Praise God. Why? Because your dreams can get you into trouble. But if you stick with it, it will get you out. I don't know why God does what he does. Tell the truth. Uh, I'm sure the scripture is there. Sometimes we don't want to see it. But but I was thinking about even some of the things that we're going through. And, and uh, it just occurred to me that except a grain of wheat 
falls into the ground and dies. It abides alone. Sometimes we are in the gestation period. We are, we are in the period where the seed is about to produce more things. But because it's dead and we are used to it, we don't want to let go what we are used to. Amen. When a child is born, it's, it's almost like death, you know. That child spent nine months in the, in the, the amniotic sac in his mother's womb. And, and when it comes time to leave, that child is like, no, this is all I, I don't know what's ahead of me. But if the child stays too long, it's going to be terrible. Sometimes you got to let go and because there's a new world. Amen. A new thing, a new season. And so that seed that you're used to will die. It will lose its skin. It will, it will get old, but it brings forth a new plant with more seeds. And so I'm even talking to myself tonight because it's, you know, sometimes you're, you're talking, you don't get to hear yourself, you know, but I'm telling you, praise the Lord, Sister Keisha, God bless you. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Amen. Sometimes you got to hold on. Amen. And, and let God have his way. Somebody say amen. So Joseph, Joseph had what we call, amen, undying faith. Let's look, some, let's look at another one. Moses. Amen. What can we talk about? Oh my God. Moses had fearless faith. Amen. He only feared God. Moses didn't want to go initially when God said, I'm going to say to Pharaoh. Moses was a fugitive running away because he killed a man and hit him in the sand. And word got out. Amen. He thought he was doing it in secret, but somebody saw him. And word got out that he was a murderer. Murderer! <laughs> Blood is on your shoulder. And he had to run out of town. Praise God. Praise God. But you know, I was teaching a few weeks ago. Um, Sometimes God looks beyond the act. Because God, we call him a murderer. But God sees somebody who will fight for his people. Amen. So, so even though he, it was wrong what he did, but God saw something else in it. When God looked at Saul, Saul was doing damage to the church. Amen. Hauling people out and, and, and committing some to prison and to death. But God saw somebody, if that man could get saved, he would be fearless. He would be a good evangelist. And God was right. When, when Saul got converted to the Apostle Paul, amen, he wrote more books than anybody else in the New Testament. He wrote maybe, what, 13 books, amen, of the New Testament. Or 14, if you count Hebrews, there is a debate there if it's if he wrote Hebrews or not. But but let me say to you that God, sometimes you have to look at the character, amen, the, the, the person. Somebody opposes you and your and your vision is not that they they hate you. Sometimes it's somebody who has a strong disposition and uh, they, they they think outside the box. So so be very careful. You can't always surround yourself with people who like you. Maybe that's why Jesus chose Judas, <laughs> because of, of everybody else loved, loved Jesus. Judas was the one who betrayed him, but everybody else loved Jesus, but none of them could be trusted. <laughs> so as much as Judas had his opinion and all that kind of stuff, he was the one who carried the bag. He was a treasurer. Mark you, Matthew, Matthew was a CPA. Matthew was an accountant, a tax collector, but they don't trust Matthew. So the one they trusted, and every one of us have two sides, at least. Amen. Don't tell me you're 100% saved. There is something about you that may rub people the other way. Amen. Every one of us have a, have a, have a you know, we are not all supermen. We are sometimes Clark Kent. Praise God. And, uh, you know, there's something that can really get us weak. Praise the Lord. Amen. Even Superman had kryptonite. Amen. To deal with. So we all have something. Praise God. But don't use this something to, to be an, make an excuse. Amen. God is able to keep you from falling. So Moses, Moses had something. I mean, Moses did some stuff. Uh, God bless you, Dr. Johnson. Moses did some stuff that that was 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 radical. I mean, I mean, God raised him up in the house of Pharaoh. And sometimes you don't know where God has placed you. Let me get back to that sermon on Sunday. Sometimes God puts God, God knew why He put that young girl in Naaman's house. I mean, we don't even know her name. She's a she's of the stock of Israel. Naaman is a Syrian. We know Naaman's name, and he's mentioned among the prophets. He's, he's in Second Kings chapter five. And this girl who was an Israelite, we don't know her name. Sometimes God puts you. Let me, if I can get away with this, Doctor Johnson, if I can get away with this, 
Sometimes God will let a saint get sick just to reach a doctor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nothing wrong with you. You love the Lord, but somehow God allows that sickness so that while you're in the hospital, you can minister to a doctor who is too busy to come to church. Praise the Lord. Genuinely busy. But while you're there, you say, son, God bless you. Amen. Jesus love you. You are the only event. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Regardless of where you are, be a witness because the steps of a good man are ordered by God. You, you don't know why you're there, but God puts us in, the, in places where we can be most effective. Glory to God. It's like dynamite. When you want to blow something up, you don't put the dynamite out in the open. You place it in a, in a place where it has the greatest effect so that when it blows, the places around it will help to create more damage. Praise God. When they put Paul and Silas in jail, it's like putting them in the inner place. They put them in the, they put them in the inner prison. Praise God. And if you put power in an inner place, it has more effect than if it were out in the open. And so sometimes... I don't know why I'm saying this. Glory to God. Doctor, help me, Sister Beckford. Amen. 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 I got to watch myself because I don't want, you know, sometimes when trouble hit you, you forget what you've been teaching. Amen. I know they said to Jesus, physician, heal thyself. And somebody's going to say, Pastor, you said that. You preached that. No, you're going through. You stand up and listen to your whole sermon. I've had that said to me already. <laughs> but, but the truth of the matter is, it's not my words. It's not my word. It's the word of the Lord. Whether I agree or not, or it affect me or not. Sometimes, glory to God. Hallelujah. It's coming on me now. It's coming on me now. Glory to God. Sometimes, I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but sometimes God has you in a holding pattern. It's like those planes circling Pearson and can't land yet because they haven't gotten clearance from the tower. Amen. Sometimes God has you in a holding pattern. You got to maintain your position. You got to cut your speed. You got to circle the road. You, you see it, but you can't land it. <laughs> if you try to land, you're going to cause an accident. You're going to kill yourself and the crew and cause damage. Praise God, because you don't see the other planes around you. But but the, the person in the tower will say, hold that, hold that speed. Go down to 200 uh, whatever knots. Praise God. Da, 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 da. Maintain that so and so because they know you're next. And runway number five is opening up. But you don't see it because you can only see it in front of you. Praise God. But they have the bigger picture. God. Excuse me. I'm getting loud. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Glory to God. God. <coughs> Calm myself down. God sees the bigger picture. Glory. Hallelujah. God sees. Who am I talking to out there? I said, God. God sees the bigger picture. Yes, man. You don't see it yet. You can't see behind you. Abraham was going up the mountain. He knows you can't. You only can put one foot ahead of the other. But God had a ram already caught in a jam. Praise God. Listen, listen. God, 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 God. Somebody say God, the man. Say God. Hallelujah. Amen. God and God in her. Master God and God. Just, I mean, if you can't find a name. And his name is Jesus, but sometimes you have to say God. Watch at God. Hey, mighty God. Amen. Moses, Moses, fearful faith. I mean, this man left, 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 left Egypt at 40 years old. Spent 40 years in the wilderness. Can you imagine leaving leaving? He was in the he was raised in Pharaoh's house, you know. I mean, the man had air conditioned while everybody was out there burning in the sun, selling guinea. After lunch, after work, after school, in traffic, Moses was being pampered. He was raised in 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 lush living, and then boom, found himself at the backside of a desert, looking after sheep, sheep. And when you walk behind sheep, you step in something. You know, you step into something. Uh huh. Shepherds, the, the shepherds were not. Popular, so as much as we, is Jesus made shepherds popular? No, shepherds were like the lower class of society. In fact, when Joseph, when Joseph was in Egypt and he got popular and everybody discovered who he was and he sent for his family. When they came, they, he gave them a little hint. He gave them a script. He said, if Pharaoh asks you what you do, 
Tell them you're a shepherd. And they will say, all right, you stay over Goshen. You stay. Because they, they, they don't mix. Shepherds are nasty people. Considered nasty. They, do, they look like sheep. They, they have hair. They smell like sheep urine. They, they would do some stuff to the sheep that only a mother would do to their own child. Because sheep were helpless. Praise God. Amen. So you don't invite shepherds. They were they abide in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. They watch over their flocks by night. They're out in the dark. That's what that's where David met the men that belonged to them to Nabal. And when David was hungry and wanted some food and want Nabal said, I'm not feeding them. And David was about to kill him. Why? Because he said, While your men were out there at night, they didn't have to worry. Because we watched with them and we guarded them and protected them and their livestock, your livestock. Shepherds are night howls. They are out there being in the night, tired and red-eyed, looking, looking out for predators. Amen. Praise God. But Moses, God called him from the backside of a desert. Amen. And made him the greatest prophet, the meekest man. Moses has the reputation of speaking to God face to face. Moses was the only one who could threaten God. I said, listen, if you're not going to take these people, back my name out the book. <laughs> Moses, you're brave. I'm not doing it. Let every man work out. I'll be the first to quote, work out your own salvation. <laughs> but Moses said, Lord, if these people are not coming, I'm not going. What? And God said, all right. He was an intercessor. And if there's somebody that God looks, Sister Cindy, bless you, my dear. What? Amen. Look like I'm missing some people here, Sister Kayla. I can't see who is on this thing here. Amen. But Moses, Moses had great faith. Now, who else do we know with great faith? Praise God. Amen. Uh, Israel, Israel in general, uh, uh, Israel, the nation, they had delivering faith. They just kept on walking, believing that God will turn things around. Sometimes, sometimes faith, you can't help yourself in them. Amen. Sometimes you can't help yourself. You just have to keep moving. Praise God. You just have to keep moving and just doing what God says. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you have to keep going and see what the end is going to be. One foot ahead of the other. Amen. I'm going on this thing here. I'm going on my computer just to see if I can see who is uh, you know, commenting because I can't see it on my screen here. All right. So, 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 and Rahab. Anybody remember Rahab? Rahab was a harlot. Amen. A harlot with a heart. Praise God. As much as God did not condone her trade, notice what I said. Sometimes God looks beyond the act. She was a harlot. That's not right. It's sin. Your body is the temple of the Lord and whatever. But she had a passion towards the people of God. And as a result of that, God used that passion that she had to save her and her household. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know the story. <clears throat> when, the, when the spies came to spy out Jericho, Rahab took them into her house and hid them and lied that they were not there. When, when the king of Jericho heard that the men came, they came to her house and said, if there's any place these men will go, is your place. Where are they? She said, they've gone a long time, man. Hurry, hurry. And she sent them on a wild goose, goose, goose chase. And um, she told them, so listen, I, we've heard what, what the Lord did to the, the enemies. I know we have no chance of resisting you guys, but do, do me a favor. Save my house, save my family. See, see, I don't I keep going back to it. If you have a heart for people, if you have a heart for people, you're 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 closest to what God is looking for. I'm not saying you're perfect, but if you have there are some people who 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 are wicked, but they have a heart, they may be wicked to some people, but because they have a heart for other people, they, they rob from the rich and give to the poor. No, robbing is wrong, like Robin Hood. Right, but because they do it for good reasons, sometimes God looks beyond the act and says, That person has a compassion I can use, and so God will save them or do his best to save them. Praise God! Because I'm gonna to get to this because saving people is not only up to God. I'm moving over now, I'm moving over, amen. Uh, so we're talking about faith, and we gave a few examples and so on. So, but I want to make a disclaimer. 
Amen. And I learned this from a gentleman called Ivy. He learned. Amen. Your, the, the, your, your faith uh, is not automatic. Amen. God's will does not just happen in your life because God says so. No, hear me out. I know some of you are like, oh, if it's God's will. How many times have you said if it's the will of the Lord? There are some things that require your participation for it to work. The Bible says in the Hebrews that the word preach did not profit them. Let's find that, Sister Kayla. It was a mix with faith in them. Where are we at? Amen. That's so like Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, I'm in the book. Somebody help me out. Amen. Look at 4 verses 1 and 2. Let Hebrews chapter 4. I beg your pardon. Hebrews. Amen. Hebrews. That's that's they, they said that that's proof that the men, all men should be the ones making the coffee. If you live at home, the man should make the coffee because the Bible said Hebrews. <laughs> Anyhow, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Why? For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So so in, in our in our congregation they're used to me saying, say amen to that. Amen. You know, you know, we, you can touch a neighbor and do all kind of stuff, but you have to learn to say amen to the word. Some of some of the things I'm speaking now, some of you should be typing amen already. Not because I say it, but when you agree to it. Amen. When 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 the word preach, you can be sitting beside somebody. Amen. And uh, something was said, but your spirit grab a hold to it. You agree with that word and it will benefit you and not them. Praise God. Because the word preached, God bless you, Sister Solomon. The word preached did not was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. It's the same word, but the word won't profit you unless it's mixed with what we're talking about tonight. Faith. So you need faith. To make the word come alive in your heart. Amen. Faith is required to make the word come alive in your heart. Amen. The word is the word. But if you believe it. When Jesus came to that man by the pool in St. John chapter 5. He didn't know who Jesus was. Jesus wasn't hiding. Praise God. To him Jesus was just another man. But somebody said to him. Take up your bed and walk. And because... The faith was mixed with that word. The man got up and took his bed and walked. When they asked him who made the word, he said, I, I don't know, but whoever told me to, the, the same said, take up my bed and walk. Amen. Praise God. I can prove it to you. Some of you looking at me funny. <laughs> like, uh, is that in the Bible? Let's go to St. John chapter 5. Amen. St. John chapter 5. Somebody can speak a word to you. They don't need a title. They don't know. But if you receive that word and say amen to it, it can be a good blessing in your life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, look at verse number 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. St. John chapter 5. Look at verse 11. He answered and said, He don't know who he was he that made me whole the same said unto me take up thy bed and walk they ask then ask they him what man is that who said unto thee take up thy bed and walk and he said and he that was healed knew not are you there look at verse number 13 he that was healed knew not who it was for Jesus had moved away and the multitude being in that place. Didn't know who. Somebody just told him to took up his bed and walk. And he, his faith was mixed with that word. You know, it's been there a long time. I want to talk to somebody tonight. Listen, you don't receive from the person you don't respect. You can't change what you don't challenge. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can't change what you don't challenge. Praise God. Amen. If you don't... If you don't if it's not worth it, you won't watch it. <laughs> Amen. If it's not worth it, you don't watch it. You can't change it, 
if you don't challenge it. And so I want to challenge somebody out there tonight. I mean, if you don't respect, you can't receive. So, so if, if I be a man of God to you, I'm challenging you tonight. Take up your bed and walk. I don't know what your circumstances and it may sound trivial for me to say but if you mix that word with faith maybe you've been praying about something today and here comes this little ballad preacher telling you to take you don't know your story but don't argue with the word just agree with it amen mix your faith with it praise god amen and see a change in your life now to god be the glory i have no power or money or or influence to make a difference to you but that word by itself is powerful. Amen. Look at verse number 13. The man didn't know it was. Verse number 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Let's a worse thing come upon thee. And then verse 15. The man departed and told the Jews it was Jesus. <laughs> but while Jesus was talking to him, he didn't know who it was. But somebody challenged him enough to say, Take up your bed and walk. Did you see that? God bless you, Sister Naomi. Welcome, my dear. Did you see that? That is there in the book. So, so sometimes you don't need a title. You just need to make sure you're saved and you're genuine and you have the Holy Ghost. You can be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Some of you are sitting on some word. I don't know how you don't burn up because that fire is in your bones. Praise God. But because you don't have the mic, you don't have, you don't have to be on the mic. You know, some months ago, somebody at our congregation said they had a word for me, but they were talking to the whole church. If you got a word for me, you got a word for me, not the church. Talk to me. Talk to me. Pull me aside. Amen. I, I don't I don't have 10, 5 security. I know a few, few people watch over me to make sure, you know, that I'm, I'm covered. But, but, but they don't push people away. They just watch. Praise God. And if things get serious, they step in. I know Brother G steps in. Amen. Minister Chisholm and others. Praise God. And those who are those who are those are men, but there are some spiritual people who, who have been their purview and uh, they little cover me. But if you got something for me, you have something for me. You know, or if you have something for anybody else, you can talk. I was somewhere uh, a few weeks ago uh, ministering and I felt I have a word for somebody and I pulled them aside and, and talked to them. I have a, I have a word for you. Amen. The first, one of the first judges in Israel, uh, Ehud, Ehud, praise God, he, he killed the king with a dagger. And how did he do it? He pulled him aside and said, I got an errand. I got a word for you, you know, and, and hooked him up that way. Praise God. Anyway, let's get back to this. So, so word must be mixed with faith, right? Faith is taking God at his word. So God's will does not automatically come to a pass in your life praise god you have to engage the word of god for the will of god to be to, to, to manifest um let me ask you uh before i ask you let me let me go there uh where is it kiss Kayla? my will and it should perish is that second second peter chapter 2 maybe verse 8 or 14 or something that my will and it should perish there are God's will and it should perish, but that all should come to verse 9. I was in the ballpark. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. I want to ask you a question. Amen. <laughs> Sister Dar is Dr. Johnson hiding? <laughs> Dr. Johnson, Sister Dar is bugging you tonight. Um, Second Peter chapter three and verse nine. The Bible says, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, right? But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It, it is not God's will that any should perish." Now. We we'll say we used to say, well, if it's God's will, it must be. So if it's not God's will that any should perish, that means it's God's will that all should be saved. And the answer is yes. God wants you saved. God so loved the world, not just Jamaica or Canada or America or Nigeria. Amen. Or wherever you see great churches happening. Uh, God loved the world. I mean, God loved Russia. He loves the, the Ukraine. He loves 
uh, Asia, wherever God loves the world, wherever people are, God loves people. But let me ask you, will everybody be saved? No. No. The Bible said in St. Matthew, y'all have me going deep now. St. Matthew chapter 7. Amen. Let's look at what the Bible says here. St. Matthew chapter number 7. Sister Kayla, where am I at? Broad is away. Narrow is the gate. Amen. Look at verse number 13. St. Matthew chapter 7. Enter in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, unfortunately, I mean, the blood still works, grace is available, God's hand is outstretched. Why are people going to hell? Broad is the way, and narrow, sorry, broad, wide is the gate, and, and broad is the way. Let me read it properly, I beg your pardon. Enter in at the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. That leader to destruction. And many there be that go in that way. Because narrow is the gate. And hard is the way. Which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. So people are like water. When you hear the Bible talks about. The sound of many water. Water is used to represent people. Amen. The voice of God moves upon the water. Moves upon the people. Praise God. But, but water also takes the path of least resistance. Amen. Water is lazy. So if water is running and it finds an obstacle, it goes around it. All right. And there are people who who will go to the broad gate because it's easy. Easy. Ah. Easy like Sunday morning. Right. They go to the Broadway. And when I was younger, I lived in a yard where the, the man would play music on Sunday morning. And it's, the music he plays on Sunday morning is different from the music he plays at Saturday night. You know. Uh, so Sunday morning is all of those 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 four tops the 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 the, the blue the blue jays the the you know you know uh, Sam Cooke and so on and uh, there's a song that says on Broadway uh, you know that kind of stuff you know um, so so but people go down people will go down the path of least resistance where it's easy where where it's but 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 because a Christian life comes with challenges. And few, few will take that on. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because and this scripture is telling us, let me get back on topic. It's telling us that not everybody will be saved. Many will go down the Broadway. Many because the place it's wide. Many will go down there. And you can see there are people dying today. You know that saved. They, they, you can have the biggest choir in the world at your funeral. Remember when when um, I'm going to get in trouble now because, you know, people, we like putting people in heaven and some of us like putting people in hell. But, but when Aretha Franklin passed away, amen. You know that woman's a backslider. Praise God. Amen. They have the, these, these pink Cadillacs and they, it was at a big church in Detroit. Praise the Lord. And they had all these dignitaries and and all, everybody from everywhere and around the world that want to be at the funeral, they had security. I don't care how big the choir is and all these people who are who's who in the gospel arena. Listen, you can't sing good enough. Wherever a tree falls, there shall it lie. I want to tell somebody here today, listen, you got time, bro. Sis, you got time. You got time to make it in. Make it in, my life. Do it, do, do it, now, please. Please. I mean, the, I mean, the blood covers, man. There's no reason for you to live in hell and then die and go to hell. The devil is a liar. Praise God. The hardest things are now and you don't know who to trust. You can trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean up to your own understanding. Praise God. Come on, man. Put on the name. We have, we have all these debates about whether it be Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. You, some of you are married. You took on your husband's name. If you are part of the bride, take on the husband's name. Amen. His name is Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Stop arguing. You're no theologians. Just believe the word. Nehemiah was told to go dip. He was there arguing. Oh, why should I dip over here? We got better river down here. Listen, you're dying anyway. Listen, I know the river down here is dirty and you have a skin condition. Dirty water plus skin, skin condition is deadly. But you're dying anyway. What's, going, what's, what's the risk? Just put the name on it. 
So the, the thank God we, here we have another person with no name, but right there on the Naaman's arm to, to talk to him and say, Boss man, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, you would do it. You would get fame for it. No, this no, 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 that's good dip, man. Dip. And dip, the man dipped and came up clean. Why? Because he mixed faith. Faith is action. Faith is just, just not words. Faith is demonstrated by action. Last week I was telling you about the, 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 the what they call it, the eclipse. Before the eclipse happened, when the people around the world were telling you it's coming, people went and bought the glasses that would allow them to look at the eclipse and don't damage their eyes. They, they before the event happened, they did things to prepare for the event because they believed what was told to them. It would be too late for them to try and get glasses when the eclipse was on. It is too late for you to try to get oil when the bridegroom has already come. Praise God. Now get ready, everybody get ready <laughs> because Jesus is coming soon. Lord, I'm off topic, but I think I'm on topic. Amen. Praise God. If now is the time, now is the day of salvation. When the trumpet sound, you can't look around and say, wait, what, what was that? Did anybody hear that? It'd be too late. Too late. The person you want to baptize is gone. It could be while you're at work. Praise God. What are you going to do? Run out the building, leave your office. Praise God. And some of you live far. You don't know. It, now is the time. Praise God. Now is the time. Sometimes, sometimes death calls us at some weird times. When you're on a plane, on a boat. Praise the Lord. Could be in traffic. Could be eating food. Amen. A bone, God forbid, could go down the wrong hole. You could eat something that does not agree with you or whatever. Amen. We don't know what situation may occur that may cost us dearly but it's important to be ready because nobody knows the day nor the hour when the lord comes praise the lord amen all right all right get a little evangelist i feel the evangelist anointing me a little bit but but, but listen it's 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 it, eternity is too long to be wrong eternity is too long to be wrong amen amen <laughs> amen eternity Lord help us, Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Troublesome times are here, leaving men's hearts with fear. The freedom we all hold dear now is at stake. Humble your heart to God, free from the trembling. Run. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians away. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies. Heaven above. I'm telling you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Who am I talking to? Somebody, listen, listen, you may tell this a joke, but the reason why God has me uncuffed to this, this last few sentences, somebody need to hear this. I don't know who you are, but, but this is a chance. God has hijacked this live stream to tell you it's time to get right. Get right. Better get right with God. Come and do it now. Under the cross of Jesus, I lay my burdens down. Oh yes, you better get right with God. Come and do it now. Get right, get right, get right with God. We, we don't sing those songs no more because it's not good for Sunday morning. You know, we, 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 we sing, you know, other songs on Sunday mornings. You know, other songs, other songs. All my life you have been faithful. You know, we all live. Everybody is joining. But we need to sing some songs that are evangelistic in their nature. The song alone, when the message don't reach, the song will talk to you and tell you it's time to get right. Get ready, everybody. In the morning, you're fresh and bloomy. But in the evening, you're wither away. I don't know. Come on, come on, help me. I'm stuck. 
I'm stuck. I can't get out of it. Amen. Somebody needs to get right. Amen. Get right. Get right. Get right. Or get left. If you don't get right, go get left. Amen. God don't play. God is serious. We have chance. There's this man. I mean, we have to go preach on hell and heaven one night. This man in hell said, said you know, uh, send, uh, send somebody down to go tell them about this place. And Abraham said, they have, they have the prophets. They, they got Sunday school. They, 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 got, they got things. They, they, there's enough churches out there to tell them. Amen. Amen. And God is looking for you to say something. Say, say something like that young girl. I keep going back to it. Say something like that young girl. Don't just, you know, somebody ask you, how was your weekend? And you were in the presence of God. You felt they not, you don't say nothing about church. Come on, man. Do better. Do better than that. Say something, man. Tell them about Jesus. Glory to God. All right. Where are we? I'm stuck now. I'm stuck. Where was I? <laughs> I was right here, you know. Amen. Praise God. Didn't go nowhere. Here we go. So we're talking about faith. The word was mixed, was mixed with faith in them. For you, for the word of God to work alive in your heart, you need to participate or to engage. So even though it's not God's will that any should perish, there are people that are going to perish because they did not take heed to the word of God. So God's will does not automatically come to pass in your life. That's what that's what the, the brother said, uh, Brother Ivy Hillard. It does not come automatically come to pass in your life. You've got to engage. You've got to participate. Amen. God will raise you from the dead, but somebody got to roll the stone away. Participate. God will part the Red Sea, Moses, but somebody got to stretch the rod out. God will send manna. But you will starve to death if you don't go out and pick it up. Praise God. So there needs to be engagement. Praise God. God wants to bless you, but you got to sow a seed. And no, I'm not after your money. I'm trying to bless you. Amen. Praise God. You got to sow. That's a principle. The Bible said he will multiply your seed sown. If you if second second Corinthians chapter nine verse ten. If you if you don't sow nothing, when the rain comes. All you're going to have is mud. <laughs> but you, if you put a seed on the ground, that seed's going to do something and, and produce more. So, 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 you know, you buy more food at McDonald's. What you, what you put in the offering, amen. You, couldn't, you can't get nothing at McDonald's for that. Or, or, or Swiss Chalet or KFC or A&W or, or Harvey's or Kelsey's or wherever you go. Praise God. You can't nothing. Some of you, you need to do better than that. The one who woke you up this morning, clothing in the right mind. Praise God. If it's even one time a year, do something. Do something tangible. Praise God. We were we were receiving an offering at our congregation one, and somebody brought a jar full of coins. They don't know how much of it, but they have been putting away two dollars and you know whatever. Any change they get, they put it in there. At the end of the year, they brought it to church. That's an idea. Amen. You may not have enough to give. You know, you're ashamed to, to put your little one thing in whatever. But if you got put it away, and when it's reached to an amount, you can, you know, bring it in. Praise God. And bless your ministry, wherever your church is. Praise God. It's doing a work. That's a place that matched you, hatched you, and dispatched you. Praise God. They're there when you're born. They're there when you're married. And they're there when you die. Praise God. They're there to help you and be a witness for the Lord. So so for, for the word of God to work in your life, it must be mixed with faith. Now, give me five more minutes and I'll be on the way. Uh, uh, um, so we're going to talk to you tonight about uh, responding, amen, how to respond by faith. Praise God. Responding by faith. So every time a situation is presented to you, every time a situation is presented to you, you always have options. And, and with each of those options, you've got God and the enemy. Now, let me just say this clearly before I move on. The enemy works through your senses. What you see, what you smell, what you feel, praise God, what you hear. The enemy works through your senses. If the enemy wants to do anything to you, he comes to you in the flesh. Because your flesh is where your senses are. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting and feeling the enemy works through your senses people are afraid because they are afraid they will get 
hurt or he comes to you with sickness or he will cause you to hear the doctor say something or if you can't hear them he will cause you to see the expression on their faces no read my lips the enemy works through your senses what did i say miss said the enemy works through your senses god works through your spirit because god is a spirit so god will speak to your spirit sometimes god speaks to our spirit but we allow our flesh or how we feel about it amen to to hinder what god is doing to our spirit now i'm going to give you some examples now if you believe what god says you will move with god regardless of the circumstances why because the circumstances are the things that you see or hear but if you believe god you will move nonetheless right when god when god spoke to to noah the bible said he moved with fear and built an ark to the saving of his house yeah people what did not what were the circumstances Noah heard people mocking what you gonna what is that sir what do you call that un but un batu amen now he was building this big boat and and back when noah was building a boat they don't know what rain is he was not near the river they was not even he, was, he wasn't building it on the sea he was building this big thing and had no way to move it because god told him it was going to rain it's gonna i'm back there lord have mercy it's going to rain you better get ready, better get right. Noah built, and even though they were mocking, some people mocking you right now. Because you're not living it up, you're not shacking it up, you're not drinking it up, you're not giving it up. <laughs> Amen. All you're doing is looking up. Praise God. But but Noah obeyed God, and the Bible says that he's he and his family were saved. So if you believe God, you would you would move forward. The signs and symptoms notwithstanding. But if instead you believe the enemy, what the enemy has presented unto you, amen, then you will not move with God. For example, let's do this. Let's give an example. God promised Israel the land of Canaan, their promised land. What was the challenge? There were giants in the land. How do you know there were giants, Bishop? Well, they saw them <laughs> and they compared themselves said so we were in our own eyes as grasshoppers when we looked at what we were up against we didn't add up it was insurmountable they were they were we, we, we can't beat that that was a tall order the enemy allowed them to see when david came out he saw goliath he heard goliath's voice and threatening those are that's how the enemy works faith comes by hearing and so does fear. The enemy tries to hijack God's channel. That's a, Have you ever been somewhere? You, that's why when they do live recording, when you go to a concert and it's a live recording, they don't use cordless mics. They try to use wired mics because cordless mics have a tendency to pick up frequency. The frequency you put on that receiver could be a frequency that's in operation in that area. And you will pick up a radio station, God forbid, or some other thing. All right? So the enemy likes to piggyback on the channel that you are hooked up to. And so that's why you have to be careful and try the spirit because he hijacks the channel and comes in in the same way that God wants to speak to you. So fear comes by hearing and so does faith. All right. So the enemy will present a contest, but because God told David, you're going to be the next king. There's no way that this giant could kill him. Otherwise, the king part wouldn't come to pass. So David believed God and moved with faith towards Goliath. Are you with me? Praise God. Let, let me give you another one before we go. Time is gone. Jesus on a boat, Mark chapter 4. What did Jesus say? Let's go over the other side. That's what the word says. What did the enemy present? A storm. And, until the disciple says, Lord, don't you care that we perish? But because Jesus believed the word, what did he do? He was asleep. Despite the storm. How do you sleep in a storm? I'm sure you're the boat rocking and the nausea and all that. But he had 
confidence in the word. You see, the word don't stop things from happening, but the word will work. I'm going to stop right there. I said the word will work. So somebody out there tonight, I know it doesn't look like God is there. The presence of God does not necessarily translate into the absence of trouble. Can I understand that again? I saw, I saw, I'm, I'm so very deep tonight. I'm not that deep. I'm short. I'm a short guy. But, but I just feel a little bit prolific tonight. The presence of God does not mean the absence of trouble. Can I say to you again? Come. The presence of God does not mean the absence of trouble. But here it is. No weapon. <laughs> I can't hear nobody. I said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Sometimes God, God is a way of giving the enemy first dibs. Say so you you go ahead, build, build your altar first. They up there trying, oh bell, hear us. Uh. God said, listen, have you considered my servant Job? They never said, Job. He's only serving you for what you're giving. God says, Is that right? All right, you go ahead. You do what you do. Give him your best shot, but you can't kill him. Praise God. And so sometimes I was preaching on a church the other day and I was telling them, sometimes you may lose stuff, but God will keep you. The shit may not make it, but you will. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we 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 associate what we have with who we are. <laughs> but but you you may lose what you got, but you don't but God won't lose you. You are more important than the ship. That you you will make it even on broken pieces. The ship didn't survive it. Because the the only thing that the enemy could touch was the outside. He huff and puff and blew the house down. But the God will keep the contents. Amen. You have a treasure in earth and vessel. That body of yours, amen. Your ship may be rocky and your sail may be torn. Praise God. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, glory to God, it is well with my soul. My, I preach I preach tonight. The Lord is good. I don't know. This is a teaching session, but somebody out there, you pull this. I'm getting all sweaty and my nose are running and everything. But but Lord help us. May the Lord bless you tonight. I certainly feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. Save somebody tonight, Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Lift somebody up tonight in the name of Jesus. Deliver them from sin. Cause us, Lord, who are, who are in the church, amen, to live right before you. In Jesus' name. I was saying, I'm leaving, and I'm going to close tonight with this same Deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stayed within, seeking to rise no more. Good night, everybody. But the master of the sea. Heard my despairing cry From the waters lifted me Now safe am I Oh, love lifted me Love lifted me When Nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Come on, Ella. Hey. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love. Lifted me. Y'all let me cry now. Good night. God bless you. That's our benediction. That's our outro. We generally play chosen generation, but I just feel like ending in that note tonight. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And may the Lord bless you real good. Take care.
Thank you, Jesus.